Hi friends, welcome to the part 97. The previous parts 92, 93, 94, 95, 96, everything is in the members area. Cloud kernel or cloud ninja members can access it. If you have not yet subscribed, do so. If you have not become a member, do so. The free content plus paid content will help you clear certifications. I have increased the font. Some people told in the comments increase the font so that it is visible on mobile phones. Thank you for your feedback. Let's look at this question now. You want to provide desktops. You know, like there are uh, dead terminals. That means you only have a monitor and network connection, but the CPU and those things are not there. So that if you need that kind of setup, you want to establish virtual desktops in AWS. How would you do that? See, it is very easy to scan the options. Option A, I am, is a security solution. It will not help you with remote desktops. It will help you with providing access to people. It is a security solution. Similarly, option C, that is single sign-on. This is again a security and access solution. What is single sign-on? Many times in your corporate world, you see, you log in into your corporate portal and you from there you are clicking any link it does not ask for a username and password it takes you directly there that happens through sso that is single sign on i will put my username and password only once but the same should be cascaded across to different environments different websites okay that is called single sign on this question is not about access is not about user access and so on so these two are wrong now you know that there is a service called Active Directory in Microsoft. If you want to use a similar kind of stuff in AWS, you have this service. It is a fully managed service. What do you mean by fully managed? That means your father and mother will do everything for you. You are just a dumb child. Okay. So that is how it works. I mean, don't take literally that, that meaning. What I'm saying is you are a lazy child. Okay. I am very sensitive to other matters, but imagine you are a lazy child. This is the same thing. Fully managed means AWS will do it for you. A lot of stuff like compute, RAM, storage, and etc. Everything will be done by AWS. You just have to use it. But then again, this is a access solution. Okay. So this will not work here. We will have to go to only one, only one that is Amazon Workspace. So this is Amazon Workspace. This is also fully managed and it is very secure, reliable. You can create virtual desktops for your own workload. You can log in there, you can do whatever you do on your virtual desktops, and then you can get disconnected. What are the benefits? It strengthens the security because you are storing your user data on AWS instead of vulnerable endpoints. You are not storing it on endpoints. It is all on AWS. Cost effective because there is a fixed rate pricing. There is no ambiguity with respect to pricing, okay? And no over provisioning. Like suppose you just need few resources and AWS says, hey, let's be smart. Let's try to fool this guy and ask for more money by over provisioning. No, man. It doesn't happen that way. They are very honest people, okay? AWS, Azure, all these cloud platforms, very honest. Why? Because you can audit what, what has happened, why they have costed me or charged me for this, unlike some of the governments. For example, Bihar government, where uh, the entire bridge of 1700 crores uh, fell down multiple times and still they are giving a show cause notice and you know the level of corruption there, man. Then you can scale on demand and you can maximize productivity. Why? Because you, you have remote workers, productive, reliable, high performance, globally distributed infrastructure. Because many times, you know, people say, hey, you know, my, my laptop was upgrading to Windows 11. And that's why, you know, there was some goof up and I lost my two days. Boss, you cannot make that excuse here now. Okay. That excuse works in corporates, not with this approach. Option D is the right answer here. Now let us jump into this questions. What are the benefits of using VPC endpoints? Buddy, what is a VPC endpoint? See, it enables customers to privately connect to supported AWS services. For example, you want to connect to AWS Redshift. You can do that privately through using that VPC endpoint. And it is powered by private link. Okay. So VPC instances, they do not require public IP addresses to communicate. This is very useful. And uh, VPC endpoints are actually virtual devices. These are not physical devices. Okay. And that is why you can horizontally scale them. Horizon what is horizontal scale up, vertical scale up? Vertical means like a tower block. From ground floor, you can go to 10th floor. 
horizontal means like a bungalows you don't have tower block you only have bungalows okay so you can only go horizontal across the land they have not built skyscrapers so we just saw you can make private connections between aws services and the vpc but option a is saying you make that connection between on premises and aws services which is wrong you can make connections between AWS services and VPC endpoint services. We just saw we can make private connection, not public connection. So this is wrong. VPC is not a encryption solution for encryption. Use services like KMS to store the keys. So we are left with two answers. Do we want two answers? Yes, because the question says to so. choose two. In the exam, you will get same format. Question will exactly tell you this is what we want. Now option C, like we saw in the documentation, make private connections between what man? Between VPC. Mind you, this is a trap. Do not fall in the trap. Not between on-premises and AWS environment. It, okay? it is that is storage gateway. This will only help you with VPC and supported AWS services. Option D, it does not require internet gateway, virtual gateway, NAT device, nothing man. We, that is the beauty of using VPC endpoint. You just use that endpoint and start the communication. You don't need any other gateway services or NATing devices. Now let us jump into the next question. This is a S3 storage class question. Now they are saying we want to store long term, which is most cost effective. Long term, okay. Easiest question, no brainer. Glacier Deep Archive. It is long term. Okay. It stores the data where it stores, just near Titanic. It stores it there. If you store the data so deep, can you access it frequently? No. If you go till Titanic, it takes four hours to come back. So that means data retrieval costs are high, but your storage is cheap. Here we are asking most cost effective storage. So standard is like you want, you have frequently used data now. You use it every day. Okay. That is standard. Standard infrequent means you use it frequently, but you don't want to save it in multiple data centers. So if infrequent access means, uh, Oh, sorry infrequent access means you don't access it frequently so that is relatively cheaper than standard access one zone means infrequent also some people say hey i am not accessing it infrequently and the data is not very important for me so we keep it in one zone why one zone because we save the cost of replicating the data in multiple zones because the data is not critical so if, so if what happens if that zone dies crashes you, you lose your data but you are still okay to lose that data because that is not something which is very important. You can again fetch it from the data source directly. Let us look at this question. Which option is a AWS adoption framework perspective? Which option is an is an AWS adoption framework perspective? I don't know what question is this, but assuming this is a CAF question. So this is security. See. If I look at other options, no, they are like common sense, cloud fluency. What is cloud fluency? This is not English fluency uh, or Tamil fluency. We are not talking about that. Okay. Then we talked about change acceleration. Change acceleration is like how soon you can make the changes and accelerate cascading your changes to different environments. But um, this is not something which is a part of CAF and then architecture. So architecture is always a part of CAF, CAF but you know, it's a framework and uh, good design practices are definitely needed. But uh, security is, if I just have to choose one answer, then we would go with security. Okay, let us look at this next question. So you are planning a migration. So you are planning a migration to AWS. That means you still have not gone there. And the company wants to obtain monthly predicted total cost of ownership for what for ec2 instances and storage so storage can be ebs efs s3 and then 
grab ec2 instances so which aws tool will help you with this okay so basically what you need is something which before going there you can use it so if if you look at application migration service see these are like your movers and packets first you you have right now what your requirement is you want to know how much will the new home cost so if that is a requirement and you want to calculate that that means you need a property agent and a deep market analysis to arrive at the cost so will you use the movers and packers because you have not even decided to move your luggage so why will you use this service migration service so this is wrong now trusted advisor trusted advisor is like your legal team once you decide you have to go there and they prepare the contracts and the terms and conditions of the payment the the how much loan you, you are eligible to get and so on so those calculations they will do but boss you have you don't even know how much it is going to cost you so how can you make that decision compute optimizer so it will give you recommendations to optimize the resources right right size workloads in artificial intelligence so this is like once you have gone there you have purchased your apartment and now you are deciding okay should i uh, i have three bedrooms should i kind of restructure it should i remodel it should i uh, you know remodel the kitchen should i make it modular in nature i have two balconies so what should i uh, place there and those kind of stuff so these are like how efficiently you can design it, systems first, first you decide on the price you want to know the price right so all other options are doing everything but helping you with the price so aws price calculator this will help you estimate the cost of your architecture solution okay you can start here create estimate you can just pull what resources you want you want ec2 instances you want storage etc you just select what you want okay for example you want two bedroom you want three bedroom you want uh, a big master drawing room you want two balconies one balcony uh, you want a patio whatever you want you just put it here and it will give you an estimate so this would be our final answer so mind you this is a trap when we are saying early stages of planning that means you you don't know you have just started your search so do not use services which we can use once you get in no once you get inside the apartment once you start staying there then you see where where you have the maintenance service plumbing electrician no boss you have not gone there you are planning to move okay so think from that perspective now this is the next question a company wants to securely store database credentials and automatically rotate what does rotation means Earth is rotating around sun that that rotation no boss rotation just means change the credentials and passwords so that bad players who somehow got access to your credentials will now lose that access so it is a safe practice for example if you have a lot of black money at your home and uh, like if you happen to be some from some minister's background or your relative and you are having black money so sometimes you store in the false roof of the drawing room then you rotate it then you change it and you can store it in the godown and keep rotating it okay that way it will be safe i mean that is what i have heard from so many raids i see in the news and etc so not my opinion i'm just trying to derive my opinion from the news uh, that i see but which aws service or capability will meet this requirement so ba basically you want to save your credentials so that nobody else can hack it okay so the, the number one service which you can use is secrets manager it's a bond service for this purpose only secrets manager so what is a secrets manager it helps you manage retrieve rotate database credentials so if you want to put your keys you put it here if you want to put your username password you put it here it will keep the secrets it's a secrets manager it is not like a diary you know? I, I see a lot of people sometimes girls sometimes boys they write a diary of what happened how they feel for someone else and etc and then that they don't keep it safely they keep it in the cupboard which is accessible by others this is not like that secrets manager is very safe you need kms integration and those kind of stuff to access it it is very safe okay but let us look at other options s3 is just an object storage option if you want to store files videos audios you save it here systems parameter store any data related to configuration data management and secret management you can use hierarchical storage which is systems manager you can store data such as passwords uh, ami ids license parameters you can store values uh, plain text or encrypted okay now you might ask what is the difference why do we use this versus the difference is it will not auto rotate the user user passwords uh, systems manager will not do that okay so you, since you want auto rotation you should use this second difference just for from a knowledge perspective i'll tell you secrets manager you can only save the credentials in a encrypted format 
but in systems manager you can store it both unencrypted and encrypted now cloud trail what is cloud trail used for it is used for enabling operational and risk auditing governance and so on actions taken by users suppose you want to know which person act uh, locked in when and etc all those activities are there in cloud trail cloud trail is enabled on your aws account when you create it it is by default enabled okay when activity occurs aws account it gets starts recording in the cloud trail event okay somebody logs in somebody logs off somebody does something he starts a database etc all activities are recorded here so it is a audit solution it is not a solution to store your credentials that's why cloud trail is wrong in this context this is the final answer so by the way parts 92 93 94 95 96 all are in the paid area cloud kernel the link is in the description or there is a join button below this video or you can use the link in the description become a cloud kernel or a cloud ninja member and gain access to these uh, important portions free content plus the paid content will help you clear certifications this brings us to the end of part 97 stay tuned focus on the concepts will you get the same questions in the exam probably some of the questions will be directly rip off from this playlist but there will be some questions which might be slightly tweaked but if you have understood the concepts it should be a cakewalk if you are going through this playlist then it would be definitely a cakewalk for you to clear the certification